Welcome to Keith and the Girl. I'm Keith Malley. I'm Chemda. Today. Happy birthday, Keith. Oh, uh, shucks. Is this, I know it's, okay, so tomorrow's your birthday, right. but it's also your stand-up recording. Yes. Do you have, like, expectations from the wife? She tries to take me out to brunch yeah. or maybe get our manis and petties, but I am too in my head to do anything fun. So do you go through the motion? Like, do you go... Do you go to it? Have you learned like have you had to learn that lesson? Yes, we have gone to it. Yeah. And then before the appetizers come, I'm like, I don't know what we're doing. Let's sleep. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Is she dis- at this fault at this point it's her fault if we start something and it fails. Well, it's hard because you're not into your birthday and it's like you try to be polite about it. I'm like, Keith, we'll get you a cake, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, um, I feel uncomfortable about that. Right. I'm like, all right, fine. Just do your stand up. I'll sell tickets. <laughs> uh, today, by the way, is the last day to get early bird pricing to get the entire Keith and the Girl Marathon 24 hours and get it one week before anyone has a chance to get it. I'm talking audio. I'm talking video. Don't be a late bird. Get the early bird things now. Keith and the Girl dot com slash marathon. And uh, we're going to close that out and close out the tickets to Keith's show Saturday at noon, April 15th at noon. And you'll still be able to get tickets at the door and you'll be able to buy the marathon afterwards. But the early bird and the the uh, pre-sale will end tomorrow at noon. Of course. Speaking about stand up, we're talking today with one of the greats. That's right. From Last Comic Standing, Last Call with Carson Daly, NBC Celebrity Apprentice. Oh, my goodness. Jessica Kirsten, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thank you. We met Jessica some time ago doing the show Ardent Atheist in uh, California. I don't know if you remember. No. Have you ever done that show? <laughs> no. Yes, you have. We sat right next to you. <laughs> They're you, very nice where people. Where was it? You were very passionate about believing in God. Does that sound like you? Um. Well, I'm not like religious, but right. I definitely believe in God and a higher power. That's yes. exactly what you, you said. You yeah. said all of that. <laughs> it's wow, did you guys talk about this for a while? <laughs> you like on- you both are really agreeing on this whole thing. Did you have a discussion about it? That we're going to stick with the story? <laughs> no, that you both we, we, like really knew what I said. Did you? Well, what? that was that was one of the major points is, you know, being an, athe- uh, being an atheist since mm-hmm. we're an ardent atheist and the fact that we were talking about LGBT relationships because mm-hmm. I'm in one. I hate that fucking label. I and do s- too. Yeah, yeah. And so that became the source of like, does God even like you if you are married to a woman? Uh-huh. That kind of thing. So it, it stuck in our in our uh, minds. Plus yeah. you, you stick in my mind. I remember seeing you on stage several times. But what's funny interacted. is how passionate that you were during that show mm-hmm. and you don't know anything about it. Where was it? <laughs> it uh, it's LA and we're bad with where we are in LA. It's always 20 minutes from the other thing that we went to. I don't know. Whole, but was it at a stand-up club? No, it was in um, an apartment studio and no, they had cameras. I, it, it was definitely you. Uh, the host <laughs> The host is Emery Emery. Does that ring no. a bell? No. Really? <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not just saying it. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> When was this? It was very memorable time. Are you guys fucking with me? No, no. no I'm joking. <laughs> was I, maybe I was in a blackout. Do you, no, I, that's not. Do you feel like we ever met before? Yes, but I don't know what show you're talking about. I don't know who Emmer. What's his name? <laughs> Is it a guy? It, it's going to be more insulting to him if I keep repeating. So I'm well, just... But what I didn't like about that show, and I had a lot of fun there, is that it took him at least six months to a year to put it out. And by that time, what if I found God? I'd be humiliated. Yeah, but where was it put out? (laughs) This is getting worse and worse. As a podcast. As a podcast on the internet. And I did it with the two of you? His co-host has Arden Atheist across her chest, giant. That means nothing to you. (laughs) I'm telling you, I don't know what you're talking about. I would tell you, I swear. Are you sure it wasn't some other, like, upset Jew? <laughs> now that I think about it. I swear to God, if this is the wrong person. I don't think it was me. <laughs> this is what Jessica does. She confuses people. No, I would admit it in a second. I'm not, I had to start believing in something yep. because I was hopeless. That's the truth. Okay. And then the more I did and the more I communicated with whatever it is, I'm not saying it's God, whatever it is, even just putting energy out there, my life changed. Uh, where, t- was, where was that place in your life? Um, many times it's been like when I was majorly into drugs or it's either that normally or a relationship issue, like a breakup or a horrible 
you know, painful situation where I've literally just gotten on my knees and said, please take this away from me. Did you go to 12 step groups for one or all of those? Oh, for on and off for 20 years. So is that where you got like God as a higher power and that? that yeah, idea? but it's not like I'm I'm not just saying it's not God really for me. It's literally like putting energy out there to something or some. I don't know what it is. You'll I don't picture anything. You will literally just, get on your knees and pray, right? Yeah, I let go. I literally just let go and say, please help me just take away my, you know, because I'll sabotage myself or ego will get in the way or whatever. So it's that kind of stuff. I feel like I believe in that. And I'm an atheist. Um, I believe in uh, saying things out loud or like I, I believe that praying is actually just um, – saying something to yourself or admitting something to yourself. It's yeah. Confession is similar. Like you're just saying it to maybe a stranger mm -hmm. or just saying it out loud to confess to the higher entity, meaning like your better self. Yeah. It's very hard for me because I am, I have huge issues with religion. Huge. So it's not like a religious thing for me. Um, By the way, speaking of LGBT, mm -hmm. during, before the show, you, you made some kind of reference uh, to your wife. Are you legally married? Or yes. You just, yeah. Yeah. But I was married before and it wasn't legal and right. it was a mess. And we talked about that on Arden Atheist, I think, as well. And did you get are you nervous <laughs> that they can take back like like it seems like at, at any given moment they can take back this uh, so-called right? I do because I don't I am nervous about it because I think people are just like, no, it's not going to happen. Like, I just love how everyone that's not in the situation is so OK with it. Right. The other part of it is that I have a child and which you guys probably don't even know who's she's 16 months old. And um, yeah. And I'm thank you. And I'm legally her parent because we were legally married. But, you know, she not to get heavy, but it's really the truth. She had open heart surgery 10 days old, the baby. And then she had a stent put in and she still is going to need more surgeries. We're on the Affordable Care Act. Like there's right. a lot going on that I'm worried about. Is did she need open heart surgery because she was born of two mothers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Plus, I molested her at nine days old. <laughs> Um, no, she yeah, was, they have such a big heart. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> right. That's right. N yeah. Well, she's, you know, she's being punished by God. Do you, I was reading today's a uh, national pet day, by the way. Oh, and I'm reading an article that kids born into homes with pets, 70% of which are dogs are more likely to have high levels of a couple gut bugs. And I'll explain that linked to lower risks of getting allergies or obesity later in life. So it's almost bad parenting to not have a pet in your house right Something oh boy we have a pet but he's dying this, i don't mm. know what's gonna happen maybe really, she'll be like medium weight there really is a lot going on That's yeah a lot yeah yeah and keith all of a sudden we're okay with pets and uh kids now if you have a cute by we i mean him he just uh he advocated before for getting rid of your dog if you're having a baby because the dog will bite the kid's head off or fuck it Keith, when that's you, so funny because the dog protects that child. Like he is in her room constantly. He kisses her. He lays with her. It's the cutest thing. See, I would read these stories about these pit bulls eating off a baby's foot. Well, I'm not talking about my poodle Maltese in a child. There's yeah. a big difference. The abundance of these certain bacteria were increased twofold when there was a pet in the house. An infant's exposure to helpful Gut microbes, what a disgusting name, came through two means of transmission. One way was indirect from dog to a baby while still in the mom's womb. What? The other was direct from pup to baby during the first three months of life. Do we still have time? How many weeks? Oh, no, no, it's okay months. now. Okay. Yeah. The study also showed that the immunity boosting exchange occurred whether delivery was C-section or vaginal. Antibiotics were used during birth and the mom breastfed or not. Is this, do you think this has to do with something like this? Like my ethnic parents believe that you, you feed kids like, you know, big spices, bold flavors early on, and then, you know, their stomach kind of gets acclimated. And so the things that would affect other people's stomach uh, when they first tried it later would, you know, you yeah. get the, the gist of it. Do you guys agree with that? It seems like it's true. I, I do kind of agree with that. I, I agree with that kind of stuff. I well, think we're making it up because we're not scientists, but it feels like, you know, you grow yeah. up with a certain kind of food and it doesn't hurt your stomach later. Yeah. Well, it's kind of the same thing. Other studies have found that kids raised in a home with dogs are less likely to develop asthma. It is thought that exposure to dirt and bacteria, like the kind that can get carried in on pooches, when kids are young, can produce early immunity. Mm -hmm. Just throw them in like a, you know, a mud puddle yeah. every now and again. Mm -hmm. That's 
Yeah, that's it's not good. a dog. That's but where it's... she sleeps. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't change the diaper for an hour after. Can, right. can, can you look up if it's okay to let her sleep in a pile of shit? Because <laughs> we did that last Tuesday. <laughs> well, I don't know if you remember, you are on Puppy's Podcast. <laughs> And you you're swore. just telling me all these things I did. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. It's bothering me now. Was it like years and years and years ago? I would say three or four years ago at least. Wow. Yeah, that's a while. Yeah, that's <laughs> amazing. Did you know you were an atheist? <laughs> <laughs> right. You swore off God. That's why this is, what a revelation. I mean, you were cursing, and I'm like, I've never heard such a thing. You God. know what's amazing? This is, okay, so we're on mic with you for the second time. Mm -hmm. uh, according to us, allegedly, whatever. <laughs> we'll get we'll yeah. get down to the bottom of it later. But you're so much more calm. You, I mean, even when you walk in, even when you then the last time that I wasn't then there, any time, <laughs> then ever, then like your brand, then your on stage personality, then your well, yes, that that well, my on stage personality has shifted a little bit where I do I do do like some you know I turn around and talk to myself like that's very calm a lot of the stuff I do is calm now but yeah I, I yell and scream because I'm enraged so it's I kind of do all kinds of stuff on stage now but off stage I'm pretty socially awkward I'm not really on like when I'm at comedy clubs and around comics and okay because I was totally like you you asked for no sugar in your coffee mm -hmm. and I made the distinction of wow you must like off sugar off rage <laughs> You know? Oh, well, I am off sugar. I mean, I, I just started again like three weeks ago, but I just can't have a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, it's more, I, I thrive off of my anxiety. So I wouldn't stop eating sugar because it makes me crazy. You thrive off of your anxiety? Yeah. It's like what my, I feel like that's where my art comes from. Really? Like, like if everything were okay, I, I feel like it wouldn't be, it, I wouldn't be funny. A lot of artists say that and they yeah. don't want to go to therapy because I they, do. they think that they're going to be not funny because of it. No, there's no amount of therapy that could help me <laughs> with what I'm going through. So if we meet halfway, I'll still be funny and maybe yeah. I'll get fixed a little bit. I mean, bit. I'm just, oh, I, I'm, I'm able to be okay from the work I do. Right. Mm. But I'd have to really just stop doing stand-up and do a lot of other things to really be happy. A fat pig. The name, you call me? the name of your podcast. The name of your podcast. The name of your podcast, Jessica. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you do it with Frank Liotti. Yep. And uh, you do a great job. And you talk about the, uh, you know, an eating disorder. And mm -hmm. you talk about anxieties. You talk about being on stage. And even though you can hide it, you're never fully comfortable. Is that true? Yeah, which is interesting for people to hear because I can fake it really well on stage just from doing it for so many years. I can look like I'm okay because you have to look confident or else you're not going to sell it. You know, I feel like I'm a salesperson up there. I expected you to be bigger when you came in today. Bigger Fatter. physically? Yeah. Oh, I lost 100 pounds. Okay, congrats. Yeah, thank you. Now, do, do you are you going to have to stop this podcast after five more? No, I'll <laughs> always in my... I said it the other day on the podcast. I'm, I'll always feel... I don't know if I always... I don't want to say that, but no matter how skinny I ever was, I still felt fat. Okay. Yeah, so it doesn't... It's, it's not as much about size for me as it is like the way I think of myself. All right. But it's the fat pig thing is more about like indulgence in everything. Because like if I'm not eating a lot, I'll want to like act out sexually or gamble or like it's always something. That's really what it is for me. The the idea of the podcast. OK, uh, let me mention this and then uh, we're going to delve more into your life. Vista print business cards. It's a deal and it can't wait. Get 500 business cards for nine ninety nine. OK, we use them. We love them. Customize the text, colors, backsides and more. They have thousands of industry specific templates. Let me tell you what I was thinking about Vistaprint cards this morning. I swear to God, I was riding my bike to work and I thought, what if I printed 500 cards that say, for, for nine ninety nine that say, hashtag kill all men, right? The, the hashtag that Marsha Belsky is mm -hmm. promoting and I love and it's like church to me. And, and then I thought giving it to, you know, whether it's a guest on the show during these Vistaprint moments or whatever, the shock, you know, the like the possible suing, the, you know, threat, the things like that. And then I thought, wow, a card that size can bring that much to somebody. Imagine if your business name was on it. Upload your logo to one of Vista Prince designs, or you can upload your own design. And Hashtag I, kill all men. And I guess you <laughs> might get sued. I'm not sure the point. <laughs> For an even higher quality card, you can upgrade to a thicker stock or add a brilliant finish like metallic, spot gloss, raised print. Vista Print is easy. Blood to use. red. And very user-friendly. 
Visit vistaprint.com, 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. Use code KATG at checkout. That's code KATG at checkout. That's up to a 50% savings over regular site pricing. The quality is great. They're easy to customize, and you can't beat the price to try 500 business cards for $9.99. This is a chance to get that professional look on any budget, so don't wait. Go to vistaprint.com and order today. All right? All right. Uh, speaking of uh, LGBT, LMNOP, I saw that uh, Caitlyn Jenner has said she's coming out with a book, but uh, they have the interesting things already. She did cut off her penis. How do we feel, Jessica? That's quite a night. I... One slice, done. Uh, how do I feel about it? Mm -hmm. I feel like she should do whatever. She didn't want to do it. That's the thing. Oh. I, they said that she, the only way she'll get in the TV show is if she does it. <laughs> uh, I, she, don't, I don't know that a lot of trans people necessarily want to do it, but they do it. Yeah. Because we won't acknowledge that they are fully what they say they are unless they cut off whatever you say to cut off and add on whatever you say to add on. And it is a fucking nightmare. And if somebody had a penis and you can still call them a woman, I'm not sure how many people would cut off their penises. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I do, you know, again, for the trans community, I know that some people don't want a penis and do want to cut it off. But I, I think a lot of people, and I've been going to the meetings, uh, I think a lot of people do not want to cut off their parts and alter them like that. And I think it's just this social norm that makes them less likely to kill themselves when they do do it. Mm -hmm. She says, I feel liberated. I just wanted to have all the right parts. I'm also tired of tucking the right. damn thing in all the time. The right parts, yeah. the tucking, the binding if you have breasts and you're a trans man, the, the pain that comes with that, the corsets that we used to put on women because we decided that that is the aesthetic that we want to look at, the people hurting themselves and going through all of this so that we can call them by a pronoun that they want is just... How are we not grossed out with ourselves? Jessica, it's time to kill ourselves. Let's do it. Oh, I, before I even heard this story, I was thinking about it walking here. That's nice. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I'm not that bad. I'm totally joking. I'm telling you because I believe in candor. The secrets of my life hits shelves April 25th. So all of you can stop staring. You want to know, so now you know, which is why this is the first time and the last time I will ever speak of it. Now, I'd like to place bets yeah, on that. Right. I mean, yeah. what am I, what are we going to do? It's like Barbara Streisand not performing anymore. Right. She was just listed at Nassau Coliseum. <laughs> so, why even consider it, she writes? Because it's just a penis. It has no special gifts or use for me other than what I have said before the ability to, to take a whiz in the woods. That is a big one. That is a big one. Mm. That is. And we're actually, uh, Hubby Face and I are planning for our yearly camping trip. It's our favorite trip. And we want to move campsites to be a little bit more uh, secluded, right? And I'm like, oh, that's further away from the bathroom. I'm going to wake you up in the middle of the night. I don't want to go by myself. And he goes, I can get you one of those things where you can stand up and pee. And I'm just like, uh, I got to like practice that. I'm going to pee all over myself. I, I've tried doing it standing up, yeah. but at least I have options now. So more on that and peeing myself well, later, I guess. Like us, you have to start with a small plastic little you know, training dish, and then you grow training from there. Dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's going to happen? That rests on my balls. A small piece of a Tupperware. <laughs> you can start with a nice uh, candy bowl. And We're all going to be so evolved that switching your genitalia isn't going to be a big deal, and then it's going to get to the point where women just make penises because it really is so easy to pee wherever you want. Yeah, it is, but it's much easier to have a baby with that vagina. Yeah. So that's the, ooh. Well, we're talking about the future. It comes out the asshole. Ugh. I can't take. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're rerouting a lot of things. <laughs> Did you? It was. Is your wife the mother of the child? <laughs> well, we're both the mothers. <laughs> this is where all the language did, comes in. Right? Yeah. Did one yes. give birth? She did. Okay. Yes. Yes. But I still need to lose the baby weight. <laughs> um. I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's for three. I'm sure you feel sick. <laughs> uh. No. We. Um. Yeah. She gave birth, and uh, was she in a relationship at the time? A different one? No. Okay. No, no, no. We did it together. Yeah. Okay. Now, what do you, do you have a human being have sex with her or does, do you do it through no. a tube? <laughs> I love these questions. It's amazing. Yeah. I had my father fuck her. Wow. And then she, he came all over her face it right gets, after. It gets rid of, it helps uh, the immunity? Yeah. No, um, we, ha we used a donor. Okay. And. Um, do you know the donor? No. Okay. Would no. that be weird? I mean, it must be weird because you didn't go that way. Um. 
would what be weird to know to actually know the guy well people do know the donor sometimes but we right. didn't want to know the donor right i yeah. think i would i would consider knowing the donor because i like the idea of a third party mm-hmm. you know um I yeah we f- didn't yeah i have a friend who um placed her baby for adoption and she wanted to be involved in the uh, parents lives and the kids life but like minimally and it turns out it's beautiful because everyone sort of gets what they want, you know. It can be beautiful, but it can also be really messy. Absolutely. Really messy. There's another person mm-hmm. involved in your kid's life. It's already hard enough to make decisions with the two of you. Mm-hmm. She's like remote. She doesn't get to make decisions. She just gets like visitation rights. And yeah, it can get messy. It's yeah. another contract. But uh it's just another way to go. Yeah, it's of course, and everyone has their own feelings and opinions about it, but this was just more, and it's interesting because you can really choose, I mean, the person that we chose has like all of my, um, Making? you know, physical, yeah, it's incredible. Really? Yeah. Did you pick that, were you looking for that or it just happened yeah, to be? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really, it's cool. It's okay. cool to do that. Uh, switching gears, do you know a comic named Jen Cobra? Yes. Okay. So she was on, on, do we like her? Yeah. Okay. She was on the Arden Atheist, okay? Uh Uh-huh. And she does not really believe in it, boy. (laughs) No, it's okay. I just cannot believe I can't remember it. It's really (laughs) fucking amazing. Uh, uh, Barry Manilow is speaking out about his sexuality for the first time. Turns out he's gay. Wow. Yeah. 73. He's letting his fans know. Wait, where did the Jen Cobra thing go? She was who was on. It wasn't. (gasps) I knew it. You're saying. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? I knew it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Good for you. You You stuck to your guns. Yeah. I usually remember, like, especially because it was in a weird place and it was, I would remember if I talked about that. Right. So I apologize. That's okay. Oh, my God. I was just co-signing along with you. Yeah. Jen's a friend of mine. All right. Good. But she said the same thing. Yeah. So you guys are close. Interesting. She she really did. This is so incredible. But you're beating and her she's down. much, much, much like bigger and louder than I am. Yeah, meaning so in person. Like I've hung out with her a million times. She's just much bigger. Like, can I tell you a secret? Sure. I really did get confused. A secret? Yeah. 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 This is how I tell a secret. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's holding a little piece of paper. <laughs> That's my whole Jewish family. I used to do a joke about that. They hold one finger in front of. Them. Do you see that man over there? Like, it's not. He can hear you. Why are you hiding your face? We got nervous about your big personality today. I know. I felt it. I'm very with it. I know. I felt that you guys had talked about it. That's why I said that. Because we were thinking of Jen. Right. I know. I know exactly what you're thinking of. I know. This is terrible. This yeah. is like, we should apologize to you a lot more than we are. <laughs> no, I'm not. But but the funny thing is, I'm not upset about it at all. But the interesting thing you is. You know who I blame? I, I'll tell you who I blame. If you look behind you, mm-hmm. our uh, associate <laughs> producer right there, Andrea, as we were talking, mm-hmm. she was on her phone texting. And yeah. she wasn't helping to look this uh, information up. Well, I knew that you guys had discussed it, and I knew there was some co- a little bit of tension, because I'm very, I just know people very well. Did you come in like, why don't they like me? A little bit. Not oh, why shit. didn't they like me, but it's a, the energy's a little weird. <laughs> we got to have Jen on now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, you're so nice and calm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very calm. <laughs> That's why you guys are like, I was expecting <laughs> you to be screaming and yelling and like, fisting yourself I'm like what is going on but, here but it turns out you're letting us talk and it's odd today but maybe you're just more calm no but I, if you knew me and had met me I'm like I would not walk into a show and be like hey that's so not me I'm like depressed well now we know yeah well we like I mean you. not depressed I'm just <laughs> awkward socially okay well you, yeah you took Jen's place you're like no you said <laughs> that you don't believe I'm like what where was this? You know what? You're a lot happier with your wife than Jen. <laughs> That's true. I, I know. That's I know true. all of it. I know all of it. And she also was affected by the. And I don't know. I don't know if it's also anymore because I don't know. Where what? The, um, there was uh, the California law of like taking away and giving back the rights that that was. She was affected by yep. that law. Yeah. No. <laughs> so basically, it's, this is on you guys. Oh my god! Not us, you know. <laughs> Yeah, on Jen and I? Yeah, yeah. You have a lot <laughs> okay. to think about. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea just gave him the finger It was for interesting you. <laughs> to, to know that you had met me and been around me and thought I was so, like, on. Because yes. that's not how I am at all. Okay. This is more pleasing. And on stage, I'm much less on than she is. Oh. I, she's brilliant. She's great. But I'm just saying, 
I'm like, I also get okay. very. I, I do want to be clear when I, if I see one of you on TV, I know who's who. <laughs> well, Jen is much butchier. Right. She has a crew cut, like a. T- oh, it's, it's yeah. disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is good. This is all good news. No, I'm, I'm on. Uh, I'm on team whatever your name Just, is. <laughs> I mean, Jen has the same haircut as his wife. So, yes, he's thoroughly disgusted. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> <laughs> he mistakes Jen for his wife a lot, too. <laughs> so, anyway, Barry Manilow's guy. This is the worst. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where did I walk into? You guys are like, you were at the train tracks <laughs> last May. And you... you showed your privates and you ran i'm like what the fuck you know what's going on you know what the worst is i'm like googling as we speak i'm just like why isn't this episode coming up aren't atheist is the worst they're right. promoting their <laughs> <Right>. shit <laughs> and then you're like i don't know if you were upset about it but it came out six months i'm like i don't even i'm like where did it come out like what are you t- <laughs> it's you guys believe in a lot of the same shit <laughs> when it comes to god oh it wasn't you it was keith Lowell jensen okay <laughs> it was bruce valan <laughs> You're a kind and wonderful person. It was Barney. <laughs> you thought you were Barney. Oh, uh, all right. All right. That's great. I think a lot of people believe in what I believe in. It's just, you know, kind of that life has b- b- brought me to that place where I had no other option than to just put it out there. I also have a mother who's a therapist who constantly is saying to put energy out there and, you know, hmm. like really just try to focus on good things and it'll happen. It drives me nuts. But she's right. What kind of therapist is she? She was an art therapist, and then she became like more of a couple's, um, you know, family therapist. I'm actually I'm about to pitch a television show about it, oh, being great. the child of a therapist, because it, it, she saw clients in the house my whole life. Wow! What, like in the living room? In the basement, so I had to be quiet. Could you hear? I listened to constantly. I would sit on the stairs and eat and listen to her <laughs> session. Did you feel like you were absorbing some of the problems because you would end up thinking about it? Hey, maybe I do think I'm worthless. Probably. Um, but I, I think I like, I just saw a lot at a young age. You know what I mean? Like right. I just saw and heard so much that I probably shouldn't have. Oh, I would. Th- I'm wondering if you would develop good skills for when garbage would come up for you, but I guess. Both. When, Both. Yeah? yeah. But I've been in therapy since I'm. Oh my God! I probably eight years old. Really? Yeah. What? What made just because your mom's a therapist? Yeah, she, she sent me to therapy. I mean, there were times I didn't go, but uh, yeah. What'd you talk about as an eight-year-old? Um, I don't think I talked a lot. There, this is a great story. Do you remember Est, the forum I mean, landmark? It's all that. <clears throat> oh, landmark. Me, like, yeah, we can like, say yes, but you've heard of our memory. I mean, it's I know terrible. Jesus. <laughs> you guys are like, yeah, I went three times. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's it's uh it's like a self improvement. It's ve- my mom was very involved. She was a seminar leader growing up, and I hated it. It made me crazy. I because- heard of Landmark. It it's uh some people make it sound like a pyramid scheme or some kind of weird. Um- it helps some people, but it's cult. It was very cultish when yeah. I was growing up. This guy Werner Earhart and. Um, my mom worked for them for free every night, so she would be like making calls for them and not home. Like it's like it took her away from us. And she sent me at ten years old, and I was in this That's seminar. I know with ten year olds, yeah. and they were going around asking people questions, and I wasn't speaking. And they gave me the microphone, and I must have said like, "My family life is really hard. My parents fight all the time." And the next thing you know, I'm on a stage walking around with a huge sign that said "Victim." <gasps> Isn't that amazing? What is that supposed to do? Well, it's kind of like, it's this whole, like, get over it. You know, it's your story kind of thing. Uh, But I was 10. Right. 10. Like, I'm definitely putting that in something one day. (laughs) It's an amazing scene. It's like... Well, you you went to fat camp, right? Was it you or Jen? I went to fat camp. (laughs) Okay, okay. Uh, You gave your first hand job in fat camp. Yeah. Now, this we had uh, our own Emily Lubin. Emily Lubin on, and she was in Fat Camp, gave her first uh, hand job. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's in the brochure, you guys. Start going the fact. Don't be embarrassed, fat boys. Now, I was also molested in Fat Camp, oh, which boy. is, if anything's going to keep you fat, it's that. Sure. Who molested you? Another kid or? Uh, a counselor. Oh, I mean, my God. I, no, well, I kind of, oh, God. I was, I think, like 14, and. He was, and at the time, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. 
for a long time. Are you thinking it's a relationship or he likes me? Uh, I thought, you know, he likes me and, but I was always supposed to quote unquote meet him and I never showed up, okay. you know, I was afraid of the whole thing, but it was right. like exciting. How old was he? He must have been in his thirties. And so when you say you didn't show up, it happened once and you were supposed to meet again. And Yeah, there was one time when he like grabbed, you know, not gra- not forcefully, but like grabbed me from behind and kissed me. And then uh, I would like every night he'd be like, meet me at the da 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 and I wouldn't show up. Because like, a part of me knew, of course, knew it wasn't right. Right. Did part of you enjoy it? Because that's a lot. The of- attention, yes. Yeah. Cause I wasn't lot- attracted to him, but I enjoyed the attention. Yeah, I feel like uh, there's a lot of that. Like I've 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 gone through with um, sexual encounters because I'm like, someone's touching me. I know. Like, I've been the same way. And because it's you know, as soon as somebody touches you, it feels good, even though you don't want it from this person. Like mm-hmm. some, not all the time, but it did happen. I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if like the feeling good overrides the not feeling good. That's exactly how it was. Yeah. And I talk about it because it's important to talk about this stuff. Because it's sure. happened to most women I know, and guys. I have very close guy friends that it's happened to. When you get older, do you turn them in? Do you let the camp know? Sounds like no. 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 I, I don't even know his last name. I remember his first name, but I don't even... I mean, I've had other experiences with men where, you know, stuff has happened. And um, I had a horrible experience in college. And then I saw my cousin and all of his fraternity brothers beat the shit out of the guy. Okay. At a party. So that was that made me... I'm not that I promote violence, but that kind I, of I would made love me. That. Yeah, it was like I kind of got over it at that point. Really, in certain I, ways, I envisioned that, and I always think like I'm not sure that that would. Um, I would hope, I'd, like, it would be obvious to me and everybody else that that would somehow make me feel better. But I always question whether it would or wouldn't. Well, I think it definitely screwed me up in a lot of ways with intimacy and sexuality and stuff like that. But it was very. Like, I enjoyed watching him get his ass kicked. Mm. And it's, you know, it's like the Jewish community at University of Maryland. So everyone knew each other. So it wasn't just that. It was like, you know, his name got out there. And did so it, it's that too. Did he get kicked out of something? Or no. did it affect his life? No. Well, I'm sure it did affect his life a little bit because people found out. Do you but, know? Did you know you were gay at the time? Does this go? You know no. what? Fuck it. I don't. Of course, I don't like men. No, I had slept with men, and I don't like. That's why I hate labels because I, I don't. I'm not like grossed out by guys. Uh, I could never say. I mean, now I'm married, but I could never say in my life I'll never be with a man again. It's not. Okay. I'm not. You know, I feel like everyone's on a different level, and I'm not. I was with guys. I just didn't want to be in relationships with them. Me neither. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm yeah, care. so I hadn't been with a I hadn't been with a woman when that happened, and it didn't happen for like four more years after that. Uh, speaking about food issues, Emily would would talk about how to get herself to stop eating. She can't just put the plate away. She would take Windex and spray the food down. Mm-hmm. I think this is a totally normal thing. I've done that where I put something in the garbage. Yeah, and because I didn't, there's no garbage on top of it. It like stayed clean just right on top of the garbage. I've eaten from there. And so I have to, like, make sure that I turn it over when I throw it in the garbage. Or if I really mean it, then I'll do that. Now, yeah. I've, I've since, like, gotten further away from that kind of stuff. And I'm not in that headspace. Now, but. you're saying it's not about weight per se. Like, it doesn't bother you that uh, Hem is very skinny and she's saying this. I'm not very skinny. See? Oh, I never judge anyone for their issues with anything. I I really don't. I'm not kidding. Like, I would never judge a skinny person for saying they have a hard time with food. Like, who am I to judge? Right. And then Emily put Windex on, yeah. and she went, no, I still want it, and ate it with Windex on. That's now, interesting. Now her stomach, squeaky, beautiful, but <laughs> crystal clear. But you got to, that's a problem. The, yeah, that's, that's. The Windex uh, is a problem. The stomach is not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stomach's clean. Yeah. You can eat off it. If right. You will. Right. <laughs> uh, I, you know what? I, I would want to ask her, as she's spraying the Windex, did she only spray one spray because you can she knew. sort of take it back? It's true. You know what I mean? She like, put yeah. it on the, she yeah. didn't put it on mist. <laughs> <laughs> and she put it on the vegetables. <laughs> Oops, I guess I can't. Uh, let me mention this, please. Policy genius. Do you have life insurance? You know the state of the world. Get it. You probably don't get it because it's too expensive or it's a hassle, right? Well, I'm going to help you out. 
Because think about it. If you don't have life insurance, what would happen financially if something happened to the primary earner? It's a good idea to, to protect the ones you love, right? I feel like for any earner, because at this point you need both the salaries, right. both the both the incomes. And if one person passes, you know, before you think, which can happen to anybody, it's like you'll have to think about money while you're going through that morning. That's just, that feels like too much. Most Americans think that life insurance costs two to three times more than it really does, resulting in 35 million U.S. families having no life insurance. Zero. 30% of U.S. households. In fact, over almost half of all U.S. families would have trouble covering an emergency expense in excess of $400. So imagine if the, the earner died. Go to policygenius.com today. Save over 40% off other prices for life insurance. When life insurance uh, compete for your business, you save money. That's Policy Genius, P O L I C Y G E N I U S dot com. Zero jargon, zero sales pressure, no hassle. Life insurance made easy. Free quotes and peace of mind. Don't wait. Go to policygenius.com today. I always hope he misspells genius. <laughs> okay. just... I'm, I'm aware. I'm woke. It would be so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> Um, by the way, I was, so I was listening to your podcast and it was real, it was brief. It was in between the times that, uh, Frank was talking about maggots and would you eat maggots on a desert mm. island? And he, then he had to go back to the maggot point. And, uh, for a second you were, you, uh, Bill O'Reilly came up mm -hmm. and you mentioned that you knew one of the people that got paid off. Mm -hmm. Is this, is this, uh, from like a decade or two ago mm -hmm. or is this one of the recent ones? No, I think it's from a while ago. Because yeah, I worked for Fox. I did a uh, warm up for your, like a year and a half. Okay. Um, for the morning show. Did you know the vibe like between Roger Ailes and obviously now Bill O'Reilly coming back? Yeah, was I mean, there a vibe this of was sickness? Yeah, this was like, oh boy, this must have been eight years ago. No, more than that. Like nine right. years ago. And I still felt, you know, there were still things going on and things going around and people talking yeah. at that point. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that you can say about a human being now, are these the assaults from 10 years ago or the I know. more recent ones right. we're hearing yeah, about? Yeah, I know. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Now, you don't have to say, of course, but uh, I'm looking at this one from 2004, Andrea Macris. And there was a big, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 whole, the court filings had all this detailed information about Bill. And Bill O'Reilly, I mean, he was dead to rights. He would leave messages on this woman's answering machine. What, what did the messages say? He would say... Uh, Good job today. That's all. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. We're like, wow, we never read the whole... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never even realized you're a woman. Thanks. Thank you for that briefing. <laughs> oh, wait, no. This is an offense. Uh, you would love my penis. A, quote, little short brown woman asked to see my penis. I showed her, and she was amazed. You would just love it. He would say penis. Yeah. He's such a fucking <laughs> asshole. He would just say penis instead of... Something Talk fun. or anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, during the course of a conversation. This is why people cut off their penises. Yeah. Because yes. people just go. Bill O'Reilly. I want to put my penis in your warm, moist vagina. Oh, yes. Just shit like that he, would make me cut off my penis. Yeah. He kept saying, uh, you know what, go out with me, blah, blah, blah. And she's saying no. And he says, listen, if you. Have you seen my penis? You are crossing Fox News Channel. If you cross Fox News Channel, it's not just me. It's Roger Ailes who will go after you. Wow. I'm the street guy out front making loud noise about the issues, but Ailes operates behind the scenes. <sighs> Strategies and makes things happen so that one day, bam, the person gets what's coming to them but never sees it coming. Look at Al Franken. One day he's going to get a knock at the door and his life will be over as he knows it. This day will happen. Trust me. Is when was that? Uh, this is back in 2004. Look at this, how I forget things like this. Isn't that so he's not terrible? getting fired. So obviously he has not been fired. In fact, and I'll, I'll talk about these, how he paid $13 million to five women uh, very recently. Uh, and he also just got a raise for $18 million a year. When? Uh, v very recently. For, for, for saying the garbage that he says, he's terrible. Hey, but his, but his, the, his viewers don't give a shit. That's the problem. Yeah, now that, They don't care at all that he did that. And if the story out is fake news now... You know what I mean? Quote, yeah, fake news. Right, exactly. Then, okay, and this is more bullshit. Well, really? Right. It doesn't bother you? He just paid no, they don't more care. millions again? Because I'll tell you what, no matter who cares or doesn't care or what side of anything you're on, picture you, the, 
five women accused you of something you didn't do, and you're like, it's just easier to pay $13 million. Mm-hmm. Who cares how much you're making? Yeah, because it is true who cares how much you're making. It is true who cares the $13 million because all this does is put him in a good light. It goes, all these women are after is my money, and fine, you have it. I just need peace of mind. And that's what his listeners are hearing. Right, he's paying them to shut up. Yeah, but to, he's paying them so that he doesn't have to ha- he doesn't have to deal, not because right. he did it, you know. Uh, he called her up on the phone during the course of a call on August second, two thousand four. He suggested that Andrea Marcris purchase a vibrator, name it, and that he had one that was quote shaped like a cock with a little battery in it, that a woman had given him. It became apparent to the defendant. Uh, excuse me. It became apparent that the defendant, Bill O'Reilly, was masturbating as he spoke. After he climaxed. O'Reilly said to the plaintiff, I appreciate the fun phone call. You have fun tonight. I'll appreciate I mean it. And the fact that he can say it, like, wouldn't you be a little more covert? Like, the fact right. that he just openly, you know, sends these messages and leaves things. It's the level of privilege that he understands he has because this isn't proof. Nothing is proof. Right. Nothing leads to his conviction. Nothing leads to a worse life for him. It's just them wanting to get attention and want his money, and it doesn't affect him at all. Do you know how many men and women don't care that he did this? Like, they're used to it, and they know people who do. Like it, it, I'm going to assume however many people voted for Trump. Exactly. Yeah. Did you, that, a, that's what it is. Direct correlation. Yeah. Would your friend say to you, I can't believe how many people aren't, aren't listening to me, and I know the facts. What and do you I'm mean? Saying the fact, uh, your friend that did uh, get money from Bill O'Reilly. Oh yeah, she posted something the other day and said, uh, "Look, I'm being called a liar again." Okay. Mm. Or something. Uh, you dur- know, because he was saying it didn't happen, or people were saying it didn't happen. Um, that he would start uh, trying to call her again. She wouldn't pick up. That started upsetting him. I also think people think that kind of phone call is boys will be boys. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You that know, is part of what I'm saying. You know how guys always have to masturbate when they talk to you. Yeah, like, so what? He was hitting on a girl. Who cares? You he's know. not even in the same room. It didn't even affect you. Yeah. I guess love and pussy is a crime. Despite informing him that she was not at all interested in the conversation, despite her adamant refusal to participate in such talk, O'Reilly informed Andrea that he was watching a porn movie and babbled perversely regarding his fantasies concerning Caribbean vacations because, quote, once people get into that hot weather, they shed their inhibitions. You know, they drink during the day, they lay there and lazy, they have dinner, and they come back and fool around. Uh, That's basically basically the modus operandi. During the monologue, he also says, well, I took you down there. If I took you down there to the Caribbean, then I'd want to take a shower with you right away. That would be the first thing I'll do. Oh, that's so sexy. Slower, I know. Bill. He's disgusting. Right. This is an answering machine. Yeah, we check into the room, and we would order up some room service, and, uh, and you definitely get two wines into you as quickly as I can get into you. I would get them into you. Maybe intravenously get those glasses of wine into you. You would basically – now picture his cadence. It's a lot slower and dramatic. You would basically be in the shower, and then I would come in, and I'd join you, and you would have your back – to me, and I would take that little loofah thing and kind of soap up your back, rub it all over you, get you to relax, hot water, and, um, you know, you'd feel the tension drain out of you. Oh. And uh, you still would be with your back to me, and I would kind of put my arm. It's one of those mitts, those loofah mitts, you know? So I got my hands in it, and I would put it around the front, kind of rub your tummy a little bit with Doesn't it. Doesn't he talk for a living? This is the worst. This right. is like... First of all, I'd rather be with a goat, Right. This is the most unattractive thing I've ever heard. I mean, literally. In Texas, you can be with a goat. I'm moving there. Mm. And I would put it around my, put it around the front, kind of rub your tummy a little bit with oh. it. Mm. And uh. then with my other hand, I would start to massage your boobs, get your nipples really hard, because I like that, and you really have spectacular boobs. You're the only one who likes it. So anyway, I'd be rubbing your big boobs. So, so picture this voice message. So yeah. he's like, okay. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I'm rubbing your boobs, right? And getting your nipples really hard, kind of kissing your neck from behind. And then I would take the other hand with the falafel thing. Falafel? I assume he means the uh, loofah sponge. With the falafel thing, and I'd put it on your pussy, but you'd have to do it really light. Just kind of a tease business. I mean, this is... Do you have Pepto or like (laughs) Tums? I'm going to (laughs) vomit. You don't want a loofah on your puss? 
No. <laughs> First of all, why is he bringing a Middle Eastern platter into the whole right. situation? And then I take the tzatziki. <laughs> right. And then I lift my arm and you'll lift your arm and then I'll look at you funny and then you'll get turned on. Musical, sexy music will play automatically. I've yeah. seen that. And then you'll feel afraid and then I'll comfort you and then you'll, like, this is like horrible. <laughs> then you... <laughs> You will get wet, but only two drops amount until I move my yeah. hand under your armpit. Yeah, and we'll measure it. Like, it's getting crazy. And then you won't be able to stop getting wet. I will ensure that, but you will Not too. because you're in a shower, but because I'm very sexy. You will not be. You will naturally, and not because you were prompted. Tell me how sexy I am. Then you will yawn, and I will take it the wrong uh, during the course of this rant, it became clear that he was using a vibrator and ejaculated. Oh, Lord. So now in present day, uh, he still does this. He, he's making phone calls and he's masturbating to women that work for him. He, when was the last time he did that? I'm just curious because I don't know. I, I know. Let's see. In uh, the end of 2016, wow. 1.6 million. Uh, this is 1 million. I don't see the date. End of 2016, 1 million. 9 million. Here's what's amazing. He had to pay over $13 million. Oh, sorry. The, the woman I was just... So the total is five. It's four very recently. And this woman that I'm reading got $9 million. Which wow. don't you think if it's five, it's 10 at least. You know? Sure. Yes. Okay. So first of all, I, I just... Ugh, $13 million you gave away. Now let's say you have $13 million in your sex budget. I promise you I'd be able to fuck these women. This, it's such a misuse. <laughs> like yeah. you, you really... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, you can you can hire this kind of thing, but you obviously want to control. You want to fuck with somebody's mm -hmm. life. It's not even about like it's it's about let me put my dick on you when you don't want it, mm -hmm. because he can, with a lot of money, you can get the puss that you want. And I'm not saying like just women could be bought, but you can buy yeah. hookers. You can buy this experience. You can. And you could be a nice, lovely exchange and where everyone gets the thing that they come into for. The but hookers no. will come already wind up if you want them to. <laughs> right. They'll bring the intravenous. They'll drugs. bring the loofahs. Right. Yeah. The falafel. Uh, I don't know if I understood you, but here's a shawarma. <laughs> what do you want? They have a whole swarm <laughs> just cutting from. Right. Yeah, so it's not like they want to be on the phone with a vibrator. They want to infiltrate somebody's life with and a And they vibrator. want to torture people. Yeah. And it's right. a power thing. Yeah, Sick. of course. For $9.99, you can get 500 cards that say, I don't know how to talk to women, but I like you. Mm. Hand it out. There'll be somebody into it. <laughs> 13 yeah. million you didn't get any. I'll tell you what, I'd sooner fall for that than like, oh, I just came, vibrator <laughs> ass, uh, loofah. Oh my God, I don't like that. Well, I want you to know I appreciate it. Right. And that was very fun. I want you to know that. S he probably had dreams. no, like when he came, he was probably like, okay, <laughs> the liquid just came from me. <laughs> if I were in front of you, I'd have you touch it. And we wouldn't be as upset. Like you can go ahead and have that kind of sex, but not to me, right. with me. Yeah. You are now in the I came zone. Yeah, like I wouldn't make fun of someone who who like initially sexted me like that. Like, all right, let's work on this. Like, maybe it's worth it. I don't know. But you're just I I, into my I, life I wouldn't make shit. fun of it, but I would run. I mean, that's just not sexy. Right. It's like paragraphs of sexting. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Like, I'm sure that's my worst experience with a guy consensually. Oh, are you saying the word penis? Oh no. This like yeah. you know, one time out of a hundred we come so like this isn't the worst of it <laughs> if if it's if it's consensual i've had to deal with worse yeah but when there's falafel involved it's i mean too, you look two at my out face of just say falafel and i come <laughs> I'm tell us people, I, I tell you what kind of food i like <laughs> i and swear to god if you say in my pita oh god <laughs> o'reilly used his status in the newsroom uh to pledge to help women advance their careers and then of course when they uh would turn down the sexual advances that was the end of it. Uh, producer Rachel Witheb accused O'Reilly of hollering at her in front of colleagues in 2002. She got a payout and left Fox after signing a confidentiality agreement. 2011, Rebecca Gomez-Diamond, a former, former host, and it's fun when they're hosts, was let go after she complained about O'Reilly's conduct armed with secretly recorded conversations. Isn't it's it weird how much of a turnaround they have with women there, but they, nobody wants to let go of Bill O'Reilly. O'Reilly paid her settlement, him, paid the settlement himself, 
and Diamond left after signing a confidentiality agreement. That's a tough one, man, to go, do I want the $9 million, but I don't get to tell anybody what a fucking asshole you are? But look look what happens when you do tell someone. What's the difference? But it, get, it gets out. You just got to hope, like now, it gets out anyway. Right, but right. Yeah. You get blamed anyway a lot of the time. It's, you know, you, you, you're lying. You asked for it. He was boys will be boys, all that other shit. Right. It's almost like the confidentiality is like partly for you mm -hmm. to just fucking stay like so that you don't Google my name and all that comes up is Bill O'Reilly's penis and a loofah. Like that sucks. It's, falafel was a mistake, people. <laughs> I meant loofah, it's an odd word. <laughs> oh, hummus. Oh, hummus. <laughs> you knew it was an accident. <laughs> chick Pete, chick Pete. Former Fox News anchor Lori Dew settled with $1 million in 2016 after she made harassment claims against O'Reilly. Um, and again, see, this is what your name is in the paper for. And, and Roger Ailes. O'Reilly gave a statement to the Times, just like other prominent and controversial people, I'm vulnerable to lawsuits from individuals who want me to pay them to avoid negative publicity. Mm -hmm. This is positive publicity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in September. Uh, Do you know, by the way, how much we want to say that guys are great? Do you know that like I had to stop saying that? But they, they come into the studio, right? And it's like, oh, this guy was so great. When we brought up feminism, he didn't puke. Oh, he's, <laughs> like, yeah, he's yeah. like one of the good ones, you know? And he's like, you know what? He brought up feminism on his own. and he like, On his own. Yeah, and he's like, he didn't even call himself like a male feminist because he knows what feminism is. Hashtag amazing men. Oh, my God. I'm so nauseous from this entire conversation. <laughs> First, I was, you thought I was someone else. Now all I can think about is yeah. falafel and Bill O'Reilly's penis. And the latest allegations about Roger Ailes, the CEO, of course, uh, he uh, he stepped down, uh, was only given forty million dollars to step down because there are all these uh, all these uh, allegations on him as well. This this creep. Would all these men, by the way, believe that the minimum wage is plenty to live on. Just I know they FYI, do. side of note, whatever. Go we're, ahead. Kim. We're we're offering you a chance to get more. He's just not playing along, sweethearts. So he would have these women. You come and work for Fox News. You had to go to be, to uh, Roger Ailes office, and he'd be sitting in his office chair, and you had to kiss him hello. Stop no, it! I'm not. None of this surprises me. Right. None of it. I. D uh, That's the part. I guess I just know so many perverted men that uh, it just doesn't surprise me. I want it to surprise me. Yeah. Hit me in the face. <laughs> Okay. Something needs to surprise me right now. Can you imagine if I really did? Yes. <laughs> I would deserve it, Jen. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Ailes would say, hey, I'm going to promote you. Now let's fuck. The women would refuse. And they'd be like, okay, now you get no show. And he's disgusting. Can we just discuss yeah. how disgusting he is? He happens to be very disgusting. That's one of those like inside out matches, like yeah. your your fucking vibe, right. you know. Uh, Megan Kelly, probably the biggest name there. She ended up leaving in January. Says the same thing happened to her. And now, instead of her entire career, she's the person who this happened right. to. Do you know what I mean? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Jessica, thanks for coming. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, hey, I'm really bummed out. Here's some more news. <laughs> <laughs> Want to talk about 9-11? <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> running. I'm running. Yeah, he says, uh, of course, uh, Bill O'Reilly. You know what? I, I don't want my family to endure this shame. He has a family? Yeah. I was about to ask, is he married with kids? Yeah, and he, he said to that one, poor of, woman. one of these ladies on, on the record or on the recording mm -hmm. that like, oh, do you have a, a vibrator? I know you women do. And the woman says, I don't know, does, uh, does your wife have a vibrator? Like trying to slow his roll. And he goes, yes, she does. She would kill me if I said that. Now, when he goes home, and this makes the news, and she goes, what the fuck are you doing? Does he go, it's a coincidence you have a vibrator. Uh, Women yeah, do. Yeah. The thing is, is she wouldn't kill him. And she, she, he's not getting, you know, he'll, he'll maybe get shit, but it's hard to get out of that too. Well, look who she's married to. Right. I mean, yeah. How did you even yeah. get there? Uh, Trump named the month uh, National uh, Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And so was asked about Bill O'Reilly. And he said, Trump said, ah, Bill O'Reilly, quote, is a good person. Yeah, they're on the same page. I think this, he's, he's the next president. I think he's right. A, 
Uh, I think he's a person I know well. I turned the TV on. There he is. He this is, is where he gets person. his news from. Doesn't yeah. he quote him yes, all the time? Yes, he does. This is, this is one of the people he does get his news from. Yeah. I think he shouldn't have settled, personally. I think he shouldn't have settled. What do you think that means, Donald? That this is could... his quote. This yeah. is what our president is yeah. saying. This is like, does he understand none of these words are important to this? In the July 24th interview last year, he said, I could tell you that some of the women are complaining. I know how much he's helped them. This was on Meet the Press. I hear they're complaining, but they got jobs. I do know that much. You know, it's like, for me, how much can I react to this stuff? Because all day, every day, there's something else that enrages me. So I have to kind of pick and choose now right. or else I'm not going to be okay. Right. Like all this news with Trump and everything. Yeah, I, remember, I can't handle it. And like, I understand Fox News is getting at least Bill O'Reilly's show is getting more viewers. And I do understand that in 2004, when the news came out, I'm like, I do have to hear what he says. And he's like, and this is over and settled in the last time I talk about that. And I'm just thinking, oh, you can do that? Now, it's also the last I watch your show, but you could just say that's the end of that. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I robbed you, I admitted it, <laughs> right. and I think we're all done yeah. having this I killed your child, right. but I'm just, you know. But didn't admit it. I said Let's it. Let's be clear. Yeah, it's like, oh, you know what? Uh, it's paid off. I'm being used. That's it. That's it. It's, it even offends me that I'm being asked. I'll tell you what, if I'm accused of this, oh, you wouldn't be able to shut me up. Yeah. We're having a conversation, believe me, daily. Um, yeah, I guess if you were accused of murder, right? Yeah. And you had to pay that off. I'm not talking about it. See you tomorrow. Yeah, it's over. Why do I have to explain myself? He didn't even have to go to court. No. Let's talk about something more pleasing. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. The movie The Comedian. Mm -hmm. You played Robert De Niro. <laughs> and you did a great job. <laughs> that was Jen Cobra. <laughs> ah, God damn it! Um, <laughs> no, I... <laughs> No, I, I did see the movie. I see everything. Yeah. And uh, I, you were some kind of consultant on it as mm -hmm. well, right, as being in it. And, of course, you're some kind of consultant because, like, halfway through, you do a 30-minute set, right? <laughs> it so was good a 30-minute set. <laughs> I, um, I was performing at the Comedy Cellar, and he saw me. Okay. And he called me in to be in a scene with him, that scene. Right. And then after talking and hanging out for, like, 40, uh, four hours, crazy, with he and the director, they asked me to – to teach him how to, you know, stage presence and all that other yeah. stuff and um, and help. And to make a very long story short, I became the comedy consultant and associate producer and um, and, a, and I didn't get a writer credit, but I wrote a lot of stuff. Okay. Even like the real, you know, the dramatic scenes. Oh, wow. It was an incredible experience. But, you know, we're talking about this thing with Bill O'Reilly and I'm thinking I've worked with so many men, you know, in power in the past couple of years and it's real. Yeah. It's real. It's not just... You know, Fox News. It's also it's just it, it's it's a lot. Do it's, we have to keep an eye on Robert De Niro? I'm not sure what you're. No, implying. he is very very appropriate. But you know, you have producers and this one and that one, oh, and yeah? they kind of just you know say whatever they want because they have shitloads of money and they have power. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Would you do another movie again? Yeah. Oh right. yeah. yeah. How do you, you can't. You can't. Not it was an incredible hired. experience for me. By the way, so, okay, so I want to ask you about being a consultant on something like that because mm -hmm. it's like, it, I feel like it's nerve-wracking because you're representing your career and other people in your career, especially with comedians. They take that stuff very seriously. The name of the movie is What I Do. Yeah. yeah. What I, <laughs> I didn't take it on that much because I realized that I'm going to do everything I can, but none of the decisions are, like, I had, <clears throat> excuse me, I had a say but there were 20 other people who made the decision. So I just did everything I could to, to right. help him represent a comedian and every, you know, then it was out of my hands. Did you, did you feel like no matter what, you're going to get shit from some comics about it? Like, oh, that's not what a comedian is. Oh, I don't care because it's not. The, anyone who knows the business knows it wasn't up to me what he did in the movie. I, it's up to the director. See, he makes every decision about every line. There were things that 50 people would say we shouldn't do, and he made the decision to do them, the director. Was it ever frustrating? Like, I picture... Very it's, frustrating. That's what I picture. Very. I would, like, scream, please listen to me, please. Mm, right. But it was, you know, just because you're a consultant, there were a lot of other consultants and people putting their two cents in. And I, I did what I could. Now, why, why have so many consultants and everyone is shaking their head on that one topic that you're thinking about maybe and why would they go for this other thing because they know because there it's, it was a lot of men and they all knew the it. business and were fans of comedy and i'm like but i'm the one who experiences it 
De Niro was incredibly open, would always say, I want Jessica in the room. What's Jessica think? Da, 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 da. But, you know, I, I maybe got half the things in that I needed. You know, I just did what I could. Was there... Like, there's a heckler scene, as you saw, right. where there's this huge guy in the back of the room, and he's yelling out at De Niro on stage. I'm like, he would never leave the stage. He's 70-something years old. You know right. what I'm saying? With this huge guy, and, like, punch him. Like, it just would never happen. The guy's have putting him his sit act on YouTube. Right, right, the, right. Yeah. and I'm like, just have him sit up front or throw something at him. Like, it, this is yeah. not realistic. But they did what they wanted to do. I, I okay, there was... I could, I could see why <clears throat> that would be because I know that when you write something, he you... called in Sonny Corleone to go to the back of the room, and I'm like, what is happening in this movie? Yeah. Well, any comic that listen, if people, if people say jessica did this or it's because of jessica they don't know me because anyone that knows me knows that you know if they even know me a little bit they know that there's things i wouldn't have done like agreed to or done or said right. to do i mean was there another moment that you thought this is definitely not how stand-up goes a, a hundred times really yeah yeah when not they... just stand-up but there were there were a lot of things that I would say, like even with his interactions with Leslie Mann. Like I, became, so I was just going to say, do you go, Leslie Mann wouldn't date you? <laughs> yeah, like there were times I said he has to do this or this has to happen for this to be realistic. So I was consulting on the entire movie. I mean, the stand-up was yeah. the least of it. Wow. Yeah. What, what wouldn't he have done with Leslie? Um, well, they had one intimate scene in the apartment, and I was like right there and really telling them how she should approach him. Really? How, like, what, how do you even know? Like, what, where is that coming from? I just kind of know these, I don't know. Um, Like, just human interactions, you know? Like, basically for her, him to get her to be, want him, he had to be funny. You know, I, 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 like, when she got down on her knees and, like, you know, touched his legs. Like, there were things I just, you know, I was in a room with just the two of them explaining to them what I thought they should do. It was really interesting for me. I learned a ton, you were and like, I didn't want to go a lot of the time because he he hired me, the Robert, director um, didn't. De Niro hired me and paid oh. me, and so I was kind of the one who was like, "Get her out of." Not, I mean, right. they were nice to me, but you know, I would always jump in because I'm a truth teller. I can't just stand there and be quiet. I was so going to say it didn't become intimidating to speak. Yes, it was very hard to, to show up for months and and like. You know, my wife would say, you got to do it. Just do it. He wants you there. But I, it was intimidating because I would see something and run up to Bob and say, this is not what should be happening. Or can he say this? Or you should have the audience member do this or do that. Or Did he back you up a lot? Yes, as much as he could. But then at some Look point. Look at you, he, though. Yeah. That's run amazing. Up, it was good for me. Run up to Bob. Well, everyone calls him Bob. It's not like I'm being like, <laughs> Bob. <"Bobby." laughs> like, no one calls him Robert. But Wait, um, were you intimidated when you first met him? Um, no, he's really sweet. He, I mean, he's shy. You know, he's a little shy, but he's the nicest guy. He really is. I get nervous that sometimes he really thinks he's in the mob. He has it together. <laughs> yeah, he okay. does. All right. Yeah, yeah. He me. He really is a good person. All right. Good. But you know, the director has final say. So there'd be right. times where he'd say stuff, and times he'd be like, you know got to pick right. our battles because i would constantly see things and i'm like this is not duke did comedians give uh give you critiques as though it were your movie because you're approachable you mean after they saw the movie yes. no okay i think most like, anyone really who is friends with me or knew me was like i'm sure that drove you crazy yeah. i'm sure that because right. they just know what i would would you ever fuck with them and be like what do you mean i loved it Fuck the critics. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were parts of it I did love. Um, but, you know, when you do a movie, there, that's what I'm saying. I learned so much. Like, I didn't, I did not, I did not know that the director has that much power. I know that sounds w- stupid, right. but I really had no idea that they have final say. You thought a lot the, of the time, not always, but you thought the writer would have final say. The writers, the actors, the producers, you know. But mm. when it came down to it, it was all his decision. Now you said before the show you did go to the premiere. Yeah, yeah, but I saw it a bunch of times before that because we redid a couple scenes. And so, was it exciting to go to the premiere anyway? Or yeah, because you know a lot of stars went, and it was that's when it was like, oh, I'm a part of this. It's cool, you know. But I'm really humble. I wasn't like, oh, now, because, you know, it, it's great and it's a big deal, but now it's back to the grind. It's not right. like, 
But the one thing that's great out of it is I developed a relationship with the producers, and now they're working on me with, with me on a television show. That's awesome. So that was like the best part of the whole thing. There you go. Yeah. Did you lose your shit at any point? Yeah. On what? There was a time when I was, because I was in his ear, so oh, he had an ear thing for what? part of it, and that I, I was just... the one talking to him, like with improv and different things. And Can you start that dialogue? <laughs> yeah. So you could just interrupt his, you can just go in his ear. Oh, the whole time, yeah, for hours, hours and hours and hours, yeah. That's bananas. I don't, I don't mean just for, you know, him, for like, just to do that to people. Yeah, just, yeah. And there was a time when I was doing it, everyone Star was Trek. really <laughs> tired. Yeah, and it, I was like over it with a lot of things. And I had these producers sitting there and one of them kept saying, what are you saying, man? What are you doing? This, you know, and like yelling and I was like, okay, I'm out of here. And then Robert De Niro says to the crowd, okay, I'm out of here. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh no, Bobby. I went up to him and said, I can't sit here anymore. If you want me to be able to be creative, you ha I have to move this entire station to the back. I can't be around any of these people. That's got to be nerve-wracking I can't think to say. fast. No, it really brought out a whole new side of me where I'm, I, I, was, I learned to say what I need and speak my mind, and it was interesting to be the only woman was fascinating. And when you have the godfather on your side. Right. You know? I mean, of course I had him on my side. I right. wouldn't have I don't think I would be able to do that if I didn't Did did it work? Did were you able to move yeah. the station? Yeah, I moved away from that guy. And were you able to work better? Yes, because I didn't have someone yelling in my ear, you know, negative, you know, judging everything and Wow. Mm hmm Did they ever lose their shit on Bobby? <laughs> no. No. no one ever lost their shit on him. They think he's in the mom. I still am not convinced, <laughs> honestly. Uh, by the way, speaking of, you know, the, the tone of the movie, and I've seen you on stage, obviously, Caustic, uh, Don Rickles, was that, a, was that a big sadness to you? Did you ever get into that kind of humor? It's interesting you said that because so many people have said to me when I get off stage, you remind me of Don Rickles in a way. And I, it's just because of my faces. It's not because I, you know, did Our a lot of stuff insult, he did. Insult, per se. Right. No, but um, was I sad? No. Okay. That's an honest answer. Yeah. I, I wasn't sad. I was like, oh, wow, you know, but. Right. How you doing, you fucking Jew? Yeah. It's like, oh, what a passing. <laughs> I don't get sad really about most deaths unless it's like shocking or sudden or. 90, it wasn't shocking. No, right. I'm not saying it's not upsetting for people who knew him, but I didn't. Sure. I never met him. So there wasn't like a attachment yeah. at all. Speaking of movies, I saw the movie Going in Style. Did you see this? No, I was. I do you know your stepbrother directed? It? Yes. <laughs> okay. I was asked to go to the premiere and I had a gig, but I wanted. He asked okay. me to go and I couldn't go. I enjoyed it. It. I, you, I, you saw it. Now, why I see movies and then I'm surprised that I enjoy them. <laughs> don't ask. I but, know. But it I'm seemed like a movie for old people. It's about three old men that are robbing a bank. I liked it a lot. You won't have to be because that's got to be tough for you. Go. What if I don't like my stepbrother's movie? Yeah, I actually normally love what he does. He's Zach brilliant. Braff. Yeah, he really is. He's Good. very funny. Is it? Do you ever think, hey, look, you're my stepbrother, and uh, not for nothing, but there's a bank scene. Uh, why can't I be one of the people uh, being held up? Yes. And? I'm very honest, and yes. What, and what does he say? I don't say that. Oh, okay. Yeah. You just think it. Uh, yes. Okay. Is it offensive? Like, why not? There's 70 people are laying on the ground in this bank. Well, I, I think Plus, he you knows... asked me to go to the premiere. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't want me. He, I think he knows I don't want to be an extra. I would not want to be an extra. Okay. So if I had a line or a couple lines, that's different. Right. But he knows that I wouldn't want to be an extra in a movie. Okay. I wouldn't. So, um, but yeah, it's a hard, it's, a, it's an interesting situation because he does love my comedy and right. always wants to come see me. Okay. But I think it's just he keeps it, you know. Right. You know what's funny? I come from was a family. It from, sorry, was it from a marriage or you were adopted? No. So my mom married his father 35 years ago. So we okay. grew up together. Okay. Um, I have four step siblings. Uh, but, you know, I don't <laughs> – they ask him for so much. Mm. And I was just talking about this the other day. It's just constant yeah. people asking him for things. And I think that's a big – part of it and he has helped me with stuff i mean right. he helped me he pitched a show with me he went around with me and tried to was there help me get a show was there jealousy on your part when scrubs was a hit no okay no i i, I wasn't jealous i think um 
it, and this has nothing to do with him. It's hard for me because I bust my ass for, you know, I'm in my 19th year. Right. And sometimes I'm just like, oh my God, why? You know, like I get a little victim. You know, like, sure. why is this so hard for me? How come I can't get a lucky break? Like I get envious, but not... Like I don't, I don't get uh, mad at him for that. Do you think people call you in for projects? No, but they're calling in Jen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say because he's my stepbrother. <laughs> <you know? laughs> what do you think? You're 19 years in, mm -hmm. and I feel like this is, you know, a feeling that you can have all the time. Where am I going? What am I doing? Why is it always a hustle? I feel like a lot know, lately. Yeah, I feel like I can fall into... We've been doing this for 12 years, this mm -hmm. podcast now, and every once in a while I'm like, am I doing this right? I know. Because I keep thinking about it and wanting to change everything, and then I go, you know what? I am doing it right because this is what I'm doing, and like, you, know, you just kind of walk yeah. yourself through it. At 19 years, can you say that you're satisfied with your career? Yeah, I mean, I, I, can't, I, I have to be grateful. I've done a sh ton of television. I make money. I work. Is there you know, something that you're not getting that would ease your mind about what you do for a living? Uh, I'm I'm frustrated with social media presence. Even though it's there, I feel like, my God, what do I need to do? Right. I'm constantly And then there's a new stuff. one. Right. And then yeah. it's just like one click, two click. Like it, that's the kind of thing I just can't. I can't deal with and you know filling rooms when you're on the road that's mm. really frustrating and hard because the more you fill the more money you make um I get frustrated as a woman the only time it's hard for me where I compare myself to men like male comics is as a headliner because if I feel like if any male comic had my credits they would be headlining at like every improv in the country and are you not no you're not considered no. a headliner I am in a lot of places but not like not at improvs no what do you mean at improv? Well, there's in the improv chain, you know, like uh, there's certain clubs I'm, I always headline, but then there's a lot that I just can't get into, which I feel like I would now if I, feel, I were a man. I feel weird now because I started this show saying you're a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sh I am shocked I do by have that. a lot of followers, but because of m me, it's all, it's all right. been like you guys. I mean, it's all my work that I'm putting in. You right. know, like 80,000 people on Facebook or 40,000 on Twitter. But that's from constantly, and it just gets tiring. Do you remember, I cut you off, you were saying something about your family. Then I asked how you guys were a step related. Do you remember that? Yeah. W what were you going to say? Well, just that, you know, everyone, not just family, but family, friends, friends of friends, always wants something. I see, right. Yeah. What could they Which possibly, gets annoying. What, what could you want as an outsider not trying oh, to? Oh, God. I know. You know. Jewish. I, I know my <laughs> Oh, I cut my family friends, off. You yeah, could be my as Jewish friend's as you want daughter, in your house. <laughs> right. My friend's daughter lives in L.A., needs a job. I mean, it's just constant. It's constant asking oh. for stuff. I see. Needs a where, job. Sort of. Where it's like the people who really are in the business and talented and need something get overlooked sometimes because he, he's being harassed. You know, not him, but all... I see it constantly with people that I know that are famous or doing really well. They get bombarded. Hmm. I don't think I, I get, but like, yeah, I did cut off my family, so I don't know. <laughs> right. Who knows? <laughs> uh, here, let's leave on a fun uh, news story. Ready? Oh, God. All right. In Utah, a school district has settled a lawsuit with a student after she put on drunk goggles. You know, those uh, glasses mm -hmm. that make you, they try to tell you that's what it'll be like if you're drunk. Well, the girl put them on. She was 13. And she uh, couldn't see right, and she broke her ankle. <laughs> and now you know she's telling all her friends, like, you'll break your ankle. Don't drink. Yeah. Sipping's not worth it. I feel like that could be a long con. And you just, like, hire a 12-year-old. She goes to school right. in the same class breaks for, like, ankle. a month. And she, yeah, <laughs> she commits to breaking her ankle. And then, like, how, because how scary is alcohol to that class? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, at least for a little while, you bought yourself some time. I don't drink, and I don't wear glasses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, how, wow, how do you break your ankle in a classroom because you're drunk? Do you know what I mean? Right, like, right. how, like, I, is, is the teacher going, run, run? That's what you would do if you were drunk. You would run, run. Right, right. Jump up and down. Yeah. It's not Jump easy. out the window. <laughs> Right. Uh, by the way, speaking of stand up, like we said, uh, it's tomorrow. So Saturday at noon, buying tickets online will be over. They'll be a little more expensive at the door. You know how that works. 
It is once a year, but of course I take it very seriously. There's a lot of stuff I write down that uh, I don't use, you know. There's a there's people kids in this Guatemalan village right now. They're running around in Atlanta Falcon t-shirts and jokes that I didn't finish. It's very exciting. <laughs> You're them. very giving. I'm Keith. very giving. I'm giving to them, but you guys get the good stuff. Uh, so uh, take a look at keithandthegirl.com slash tickets. All right, Jessica Curson. By the way, Jen Cober, over you. <laughs> We're Team Jessica. All the way, always have been. Uh, the Twitter account is at Jessica Curson, K I R S O N. And the website is the same, jessicacurson.com. And you do want to check out the podcast on iTunes. It's called Fat Pig. And that's that. And this will definitely be memorable because it's the most embarrassed I've ever been in my life. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, I'm fine. I'm so, yeah, you guys are great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You've been wonderful. I'll never Both see times. you again. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to insist they put you on that Arden Atheist show. <laughs> and then we're going to delete the part where we apologize. Yeah. And you're just going to look insane. Yeah. You're both like, hey, <laughs> welcome. Like you're being totally <laughs> off to me. Like, hey, <laughs> do you want coffee? <laughs> Why did we book you? I'm so surprised you're <laughs> calm. <laughs> you were s- freak. Well, in conclusion, you're very nice. Thank you. Uh, you let people get a word in edgewise. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm totally not surprised by that. <laughs> so. right. Yeah, you th- I thought I was someone else. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll see a lot of you guys tomorrow. Have a great weekend. <laughs>